Luke 22. The Bible says in verse number 7. Then came the day of unleavened bread when the Passover, when, when the Passover must be killed. Verse 8. And he sent Peter and John saying, Go and prepare the Passover for us that we may eat. Verse 9. So they say to him, where do you, do you want us to prepare? Verse 10. And he said, Behold, when you have entered the city. Can somebody say when you have entered the city? He says, When you have entered the city, a man will meet you carrying a pitcher in his hand. Follow him into the house where he enters. A man with a pitcher in his hand. Follow him where he enters. Lift up your right hand. Father, we thank you for your word this morning. We know that the grass withers and the flower fades, but your word is eternal. Send your word this morning. Speak through me. Give me the anointing that makes teaching easy. Lord, I pray that you would speak through me. Give me nimbleness of thoughts. Think through my mind. Speak through my mouth. Touch my lips. Touch my tongue. Let my tongue be as a pen of a ready writer, inscribing the precepts of God upon the hearts of men. Let the word go forth and bring miracles, signs, and wonders. And let people's lives be transformed and changed forever. And to you, Father, alone be all the glory. In Jesus' name, can somebody say amen? amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Now you can sit. This morning's message is entitled, Lord, connect me to my destiny helpers. Lord, connect me to my destiny helpers. I preached part of this message on Wednesday, I think it was, and I believe it will benefit the rest of the church. Amen. So here we go. Say destiny helpers. Your destiny is very, very important. Your destiny is very, very important. Very, very key and very important. Um, there are four important days of your life. Number one, the day you were born. Number two, the day you received Christ. That's when you were born again. Number three, the day you discovered why you were born. And then number four, the day when you die. I know you thought your wedding day was somewhere in there. <laughs> but not for this discussion. All right? So, and between the day you were born and the day you die, you must discover your destiny helpers. And the sooner you discover them, the better for you. The sooner you discover them, the better for you. You cannot fulfill destiny without destiny helpers. Destiny helpers are people assigned by God, anointed by God, to help you on your journey. There are people assigned to help you on your journey. Loneliness is not always the absence of people. It could be the absence of the ability to deal with people. It could just be your inability to deal with people. Your inability to be a people person can cause a lot of loneliness. Can cause, what do you do that pushes people away? And you need to continuously check yourself that do I not do things that push people away? And that in itself could be something that the enemy has pre programmed in your life to push away destiny helpers. Destiny helpers. The devil knows that there's such a thing as destiny helpers. And so the devil many times will fight you connecting with your destiny helpers. Or he will fight you remaining connected to your destiny helpers. Or he will fight you getting to discover who your destiny helpers are. There are people you meet that they, they just want to help you. And, 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 and sometimes we're suspicious that why, why, why do they want to help me? They've been ordained to help you by God. 
they've been assigned to help you by God. So you need to discover who has been assigned to help you on your journey by God. And you need to respect those people and cultivate the relationship. Because not all relationships are the same. Not all relationships are the same. Some relationships are seasonal. Some are for a time. You know, maybe you had a friend, Pongor Ukresh. I go back to another or lunch. You don't need that person anymore. But at that time, that was a destiny connection. <laughs> Otherwise, there was no symbols of greatness. Tell your neighbor, you need people. That could be the word that somebody, somebody you know, needs to hear. We think it's, it's very powerful when you say, I don't need people. It's very foolish. I want you to write this down. From today, I must work on my people skills. I must work on my people skills. It could be the one thing the devil is using against you to hinder you from moving forward. You don't smile. You got all serious. Negro, you going nowhere. I was smoking. Because I not going to I not Say destiny help us. All right. So destiny means. Where, where, where God wanted you to get to in your journey in life. Alright? And, and, and destiny is not really a destination per se. It's, 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 there are things along the way of destiny that you're supposed to accomplish. For yourself, for your family, for the kingdom, for your generation. And on, on, you know, in the lives of some people, they have a, a destiny that is supposed to affect the nation. And there are people with an international destiny. There are people whose destinies are linked to your destiny. You know, but I, you know, in, you know maybe the, their destiny is intertwined with your destiny. I, I don't want to get into all of that. I want to just zone in on destiny helpers. Can somebody say destiny helpers? But you, 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 you guys are intelligent people. You understand what I've just shared, didn't All right? Somebody say destiny helpers. So without a destiny helper, your destination is not in view. Without a destiny helper, your destination is not in view. So what is a destiny helper? Somebody assigned and anointed by God to help you and to usher you into what God already prepared for you. So there are people who are pre-anointed to help you. I've discovered that, uh, and I only really discovered the scripture after I discovered it in reality, that as a man of God, you are not sent to everyone. Those you are sent to must receive you. They must receive you. The Bible says, Woe unto you when all men speak well of you. That scripture liberated me. Because I used, you know, because I'm a nice guy. How many believe I'm a nice guy? I just, I just really believe I'm a nice guy. Even if you don't believe it, me, I believe it. <laughs> pastor is a nice guy. Tell your neighbor, Pastor is a nice guy. So because I'm a nice guy, I thought everyone has to be nice to me. I was naive like Eve. <laughs> you know, and, 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 and so I was shocked when people were not, were not nice to me. Until I read that scripture. The Bible says, woe unto you when all men speak well of you. What that means is that you are simply a person. You are like a chameleon. You just fit in. So I bow not to I don't take a <laughs> I don't take a steric. On the church, you don't write to you. I don't department they do. Come on, you don't write to you. I don't talk for Mr. Bass. So, the, so, so, so God in His wisdom says, Ah, woe unto you. Why is everyone speaking well of you? Not everyone must speak well of you. I know that's new doctrine for someone. Hello? But you must be nice to people. 
be nice to people because you, you have no idea who God has sent and assigned for you to help you on your journey. So back to our theme scripture, Luke 22. Anzi, uh, you know, go to that place and when you get into the city, yeah, huh? there's a man you're going to meet. That means that that man was preordained to be there waiting for you. Go to spa. There's a person waiting to help you there to do business. Are you understanding? Uh, uh, go to NASA. There's somebody waiting for you. So for everywhere God sends you, there's someone waiting for you. May you meet the person waiting for you. Even if you've never met them, may you meet the person who's there waiting for you. Don't just be a person who only talks to people you know. Because they did not know the man with the picture in his hand. Hello? But they, they talked to him. So you must pray and say, Lord, show me who is waiting for me. Five years ago, I met a man who was But attitude. I want Jesus to come back without you fulfilling your destiny. Talk to me. Say, I need people. Now, if people are going to be nice to you, you better be a person who smiles. Just learn to smile. Okay, smile at your neighbor. Let me show you something. Smile at your neighbor. Are they smiling back at you? Okay. Now, frown at your neighbor. Are they smiling? <laughs> they are laughing because of what we are doing. But, but watch this. If you smile at people, they'll smile back at you. This is it. If you frown at people, they'll frown back at you. Uka ito an attitude. Ia nwa pigo attitude. Uka ito anitu kwa reno, but inu nwa anitu waru. Alright? So, don't frown at the man with the picture in his hand. Because you need what he's carrying. You need what he's carrying. People who are good to people fulfill their destiny because they don't miss destiny helpers along the way. So you need God to help you to change your attitude. Sometimes people in church are not the attitude because they change your attitude. attitude knows that attitude. And and then You Methodist. Attitude. attitude determines. So my attitude would determine how high I go. Why? 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 Why altitude? Because there are people sent to lift you. May you receive everyone sent to lift you. I said, may you receive everyone sent to send sent to lift you. May you receive them. Hallelujah. You shall see me no more. Hmm? Until you say, blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. So, when you don't receive people well, they don't stay. So, there are people who are supposed to stay in your life for a long time. One of the saddest things is for people to live your life before they finish their assignment in your life. So you need to pray about that. Lord, help me not to push people out of my life before their assignment is over. I'm introducing the subject. Destiny help us. You can't achieve everything you want to achieve by yourself. You can't. It's not possible. You need people on your journey. You need the man with the picture in his hand. Can you imagine? This is Jesus sending people. Jesus who could just make things happen. But he sent them to a man. He sent them to a man. He needed an assignment done. He sent them to a man. And he sent them to an, a man they did not know. Do you know, for the most part, you, don't, you have not even discovered the, the people who are supposed to help you on your journey of success on planet Earth. And instead of praying and saying, Marita, you know, you pray and say, God, show me. Show me who. Who it is that is assigned to my life for the next phase of my life?
Do, do not miss the man with the picture in his hand. Hey, I don't want to miss that person. The first time we went to Swaziland, we went to a wrong place. We met wrong people. Before we met Pastor Justice, ah, hey, we just went there by faith. God said, go on to connect you to Swaziland. We just went. You know, I was preaching in the place. I, I was saying to myself, what am I doing in this song? <laughs> and then Pastor Justice heard that we were not looked after well. Eventually, we connected now Pastor Justice, who said, I heard that a great man of God came to the nation and was not looked after well. I want to correct that. Are you listening to me? So he says, I'm going to invite you and show you how Swaziland should look after people. And that was the beginning of the relationship. So we then finally connected with our what? Our destiny connection. Say destiny connection. And because of that destiny connection, there are doors that have opened, there are things that, I mean, I won't bore you with the details. There, there are too many things that have happened. So, if we had used attitude and said, Swaziland, that is, we would have missed the man with the picture in his hand who is now connecting us to great things. Do you understand? This man who we are going to has connections all over the world. And watch this. Before I even hold the microphone on his pulpit, there are doors he's already opened. He's already telling people about me. He's opening what? Doors. So there are things that maybe we need in the States, in Europe, hello? Which we could not get without him. And we could not get to him without the man. With the picture in his Was our relationship with the man with the picture fought? Yes. Yes, it was fought. And we didn't even talk to each other for a few years. So, destiny relationships will always be tested. You need to write that down. It will always be fought. And a destiny relationship is always fought by someone saying something. So, a, a destiny relationship is, or a destiny connection is not someone who tells you always what you want to hear. Oh, please, let, please, please understand me on this one. It's not someone who always tells you what you want to hear. He, as a friend, also would come to me and tell me things I don't want to hear, that I need to change. He's my friend. So, you tell me, no, man of God, no, this, no, you can't do that. No, no, no. Do you understand? And, and, and if you are a person who once we nango kuzwa shau sula kunzwa chete, water the season ne diapir. I think you are a thing out of season in my life. Saka yao season ne kuzwa kuzwa shau sula kunzwa chete. So this is how many of us uh, we take destiny relationships out of the way in our lives. We remove people we are not supposed to remove from our lives simply because we don't want to be told what we don't want to hear, and it has affected many many destiny relationships. Hallelujah. May God help you so you do not push out of your life key relationships you need for the next phase of your life in the name of Jesus. We know that the grass withers and the flower fades, but your word is eternal. Destiny